Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, this is Dylan Goldby. In this week's video I want to walk you through a very simple scene uh, that I photographed when I was helping to run a workshop slash tour with Pics of Asia down in central Vietnam. Now, we were out at Lang Co Lagoon just before sunrise, uh, knee deep in the water and photographing the fishermen as they came back in from, uh, from the morning's fishing, and a group of us actually saw this couple beginning to sort of pull up their nets and check them, and so we went over, much to their amusement, to start making some photos of that particular scene, and I wanted to walk you through a little bit about what I was thinking, and what I was walking through with our, our workshop participants, and just how it is that I decided on my final image. In the end we spent about eight minutes photographing this couple and I was teaching and shooting at the same time so there's not a lot of photos here but I feel like it's a good look at how to approach a simple scene, how to explore it a little bit and then once we get to the end of the video I'm going to talk you through a few things that I wish I had done or things that I might change if I were to go back and do this scene again. Okay, so in this first set of images, we we're all just sort of arriving at the scene and pretty much next to each other and discussing what we're going to be doing. And so there's not a lot of room to move. And on top of that, uh, we are knee deep in the lagoon and our feet are starting to sink into the mud. So it's best to try and keep things simple so that you don't knock anyone over or fall over into the lagoon. So I started from that very simple place of just trying to figure out exactly how it was that I was going to simplify this scene. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do this because we're shooting towards the light, we're going to get a silhouette. And what that basically means is that anything in that foreground that's not being hit with the light is going to turn black, there's not any detail in it. And so we really need to separate that from the other things in the scene. And so in this case, there's a couple of boats, there's a couple of people, uh, there's the net, there's the sunrise behind, and then we've also got the other boats on the horizon behind as well. And so being able to separate those essentially means that if we want to keep the, the two people working, um, easy to see within all of the other blackness of the silhouettes, we either have to go very high and sort of separate them in the water, or we have to go very low and sort of separate them in the sky. So I started with the easiest option, which is to get low and sort of frame them in the sky. The next thing we need to do with a silhouette is to sort of separate it from itself. If we just have people sort of standing there, they become sort of a blob in the frame. And so we need to be able to show the activity that we're trying to show, which in this case is the, uh, the net being pulled from the water and then checked and folded in the background. And so in order to do that, we basically need some sort of extension of the arms or some sort of movement of the body and the net to be sort of really visible. And when we have two characters, we're dealing with two lots of that. So we have to get the action right for one character, but we also have to get the action right for the other. So it's a good idea in a scene like this to basically set up your frame and then wait for things to happen. So once you're happy with your composition, essentially just keep shooting through until you get the, the apex of that action. So let's jump onto the computer and take a look at how that panned out in this scene. Okay, so here we are in Capture One. Now this first image, not my favorite of the set. As you can see, the, the composition is a little bit wonky, but one thing that I do like to do when I arrive at a scene is just get that sort of safety shot, that sort of proof of concept to make sure that, you know, what I'm about to do is gonna work out. And also, you know, if they decide, well, we're done now, or sorry, you don't get to photograph us anymore, at least I'll have that one uh, shot. And so what I've got here is, you know, this the woman over here is sort of uh, chopped in half, but I do have the, the man here. So I'm working with my 23 millimeter prime, which means that the only way to really fix this is to sort of move myself to be able to include both of them, which is what I wanted to do in this case. Now, of course, with an image like this, you can easily uh, save it in post. So for example, if, you know, I didn't get any more shots of this morning and I really wanted to turn this into something, this is a little bit awkward. So what I could do is maybe select a, a 16 by nine crop and then come in and just make this about the man like that. So I still get an image from the scene, even if uh, I'm not able to keep working in this. So let's move over to the next uh, shot. What I've done here is I've moved back a couple of steps and moved to my right a little bit. Um, so here again, as I mentioned, we are knee deep in the water and our feet keep sinking. So it can be difficult to get the horizon straight. So 
shooting a little bit loose just to make sure that, again, if you wanted to, you could take this to a, a 16 by 9 and sort of straighten up that horizon a little bit and just make a frame out of that as well. Now, so what I'm looking for here is to have, you know, this man's hands and this woman's hands doing the action quite clearly uh, within a silhouette. And so there's a few things here that needs to be fixed. I mean, of course, his hand is, is down way low here, so he's sort of uh, becoming a part of the horizon. This hand isn't all that interesting. And if we look over here, I mean, she's just sort of waiting for something to happen. It's a bit of an awkward moment. We've also got this little stick that's uh, in the water here to tie the boats to, basically coming up straight out of her hair. And so there's a few things that I want to try and fix in this. And so if we go to the next frame, uh, we're getting a little bit better here. So although I've still got this stick in her head and she's not doing a lot here, uh, this action from the man is much, much better. But again, if we if we sort of zoom in here, we can see that his arm perhaps isn't, um, you know, it isn't separated quite as well as I might like it from his body, but we do get a real sense of the net here. We have this sort of nice triangle with him holding it here and a bit of action from him showing, you know, what he's, what he's doing here. And then in our next frame, again, I've got a better action from the woman here. Uh, she's starting to, you can see what she's doing. She's picking up the nets here, but then you go over here and it's just sort of a, a mess of net from, from this gentleman here. Um, but I have sort of corrected my horizon a little bit here, which is, uh, which is a good thing. So let's move on to the next image. Again here, I feel like I, I really like having the, the reflection of both of them in here. So if we were to uh, set this back to its original ratio, and get a nice crop on this. I feel like you've got a really, really interesting image here, a really interesting composition. Um, but again, the moment isn't quite there. So let's head over to the next one. And this is actually the image I ended up uh, selecting in the end, despite it not really correcting this issue uh, with the man's hands here. I love the, the fling of the net here, the water flying off it. And I love that we can see her kind of pulling that in as well. And I've also managed to uh, take this stick out of her hair. So that for me is probably the image that I would go ahead and edit. So let's go on with just a few more here. Um, here again, really good moment from this woman here, fairly poor moment on this side. Again, this is another one that could have made the cut. The, the net flying over here is, is really interesting. The fact that she's working here is really interesting. Not such a fan of chopping off the reflection of him like that. I might have to, to crop that to make it a little less awkward. But the one thing that really stands out to me here is the fact that his arm is coming back across like this. And when you're working with two people or three people or four people who are all uh, working in a scene and they're all moving, basically the key here is just to keep shooting and see if you can get uh, the moments where both of them or, or all three of them are actually performing the action uh, to the best of or to the best way that you can capture it. So if we go over here, um, another one very, very similar to, to the earlier ones where we have the man's uh, hand cutting in here. And we don't really see the net, but what I do love is this sort of link between them. You see the net going all the way across here, which we haven't really had before. We've sort of had a triangle, it goes into the water and then comes back out again. Next image here. So again, I really love the way that this sort of triangle works here. I love the, the water dripping in, in here and the fact that she's pulling the net right out and sort of looking over at what he's doing. But again, hand a little bit too close to here, and it's not, it's a good option, but it's not the, uh, the best representation of that net. Okay, just a couple more from this scene. This one here, uh, again, a little bit similar to this one, but if we see, his hand is actually separated from this. We see a finger here, which sort of gives you a sense that he's, he's not just ripping it out of the water, he's being a little bit cautious, and I like that. But again, this action here, not the most exciting. And now the final one from this, which I really love the action here of the net sort of flying out of the water, but I wish that this hand was back over here and maybe we could see this hand a little bit. Well, with these last few frames, as I wasn't really moving around a lot and I was just sort of capturing the scene again and again as it slowly changed, my focus hasn't changed a lot. There is the possibility that you could uh, take two of these images if you didn't really get anything and merge them in Photoshop to make that sort of perfect moment for both of these people. But with a scene like this, I like to try and capture it as real as possible. It's not like what I did in my video last week where I've got a very specific uh, scene that I want to capture that doesn't really involve the people that are there. This is more about them, so this is not something where I would jump into Photoshop and try and improve on reality. 
As we were photographing that, a third fisherman came in in the background and started to lash his boat to one of the poles in the, in the background there. And so to me, this is an instant uh, little suggestion that says, hey, you should try and get high and see if you can get even more subjects sort of interacting in this scene. And so what I did was I pulled the camera up, flipped the little screen down, got it up as high over my head as I possibly could and started shooting down. As you can see from the result here, that didn't really work. When you get up high like this, you start to have to have uh, separation with this woman and the boats behind her, separation with this man and the boats behind him, separation with this man and the boats behind him. And no matter how much you sort of moved left or right here, getting separation specifically between her and the boats and the nets and things behind was really, really difficult. So what I decided to do instead was to move a little bit more to the right here and try to get the three of them again as a triangle, but from down low and have basically all three of them working with a little bit more of a, a diagonal, a little bit more of a dynamic sort of uh, look to the scene. So here's the first frame from that. And honestly, like I'm really happy with the way that the net comes in and flips around like that. I love that we can see him working here. Um, but again, we sort of lose the action here and she just becomes a bit of a, a third wheel when she's really not in this scene. So I need her to be doing something as well as him to be doing something. So if we look at the next frame, uh, we start to see, okay, Ned is in a really similar position, but now this time she's lifting up the net and we can see that she's part of the scene as well. We also see that this man is still lashing his boat back here and that's also working quite well. However, one thing that sort of bugs me here is how close she is to the frame. So things that I like to do when I'm working in a scene like this is to often shoot a little bit wider than I need to, because for example, here, if I decide, okay, my, my horizon's not great and I want to uh, rotate that in, I end up losing a little bit of the side and she gets even closer to the edge of the frame. And so it becomes a little bit awkward having her here. So if we look at the next frame, I've sort of started to correct that by sort of uh, turning my frame to the left here. But again, we're missing a little bit of the uh, action in the background here. And I'm also shooting at F2 here. So we get sharp focus on this man and we get a little bit of an out of focus feel to these uh, in the background here. Now, I don't mind that, but if I were to be shooting this again, one thing that I would like to do is maybe stop down to F4 or F5.6. We had a fair bit of light from that sunrise uh, just so that I could get a little bit more sharpness here. The next frame, again, we're getting some really nice action from this net, although it's starting to sort of intersect with these boats here, which I don't really like. And again, we're sort of losing these guys back here. And I kept working this for a little bit just to see if I could get a little bit more separation. And again, not so bad here. We get to see that she's working with the net uh, here, this gentleman, yeah, not great. He's sort of, you know, getting hit by the net here and we don't really see him doing anything interesting. The net's kind of intersecting here again. So get over to this frame here and we're starting to see, you know, a bit of separation with this guy again, but again, we're, we're losing everything back here. Now, the one frame that I was kind of happy with out of this set is actually this one. And I really like the way we have the net being pulled up here into this nice triangle. I love the way that she's pulling the net here. I like the way it's sort of almost like these two are interacting. She's looking his way, he's looking her way. But the one thing that bugs me is this hand uh, intersecting the pole here. The other thing that kind of bugs me about this scene is that we have this beautiful color drawing you over to this man, but here we sort of lose that as I'm sort of facing away from the sunrise a little bit. It's at this point where I really noticed that we had a huge sort of uh, discrepancy in the sky. The sunrise was really pretty over this side, but it was getting a bit dull over this side. And for me, that says, okay, well, we need to start not including that. And so what I decided to focus on was a bit of a simpler scene of just the man uh, pulling the, the net out of the water. As you can see here, that becomes a much simpler frame and we lose that sort of dull section of the sky here. Uh, what I was running into with this though, was that I really need to move a little bit left. Our other participants were still shooting from over there, so I couldn't really interrupt them. So what I did get though, was a little bit of a sense that this man was kind of working on his own, which is a bit of a, a different one from uh, the previous set of images. Now, this is my favorite image from this set, but I still want to walk you through a couple of the other images to see where I might have improved on this, because as you can see, the net is sort of starting to leave the frame. And 
Not much I can do about that. I was focused on him. I had my composition ready to get this nice triangle and the net went a little further than I expected. Again, why we should try and shoot a little bit wider when scenes are moving like this. So in the next frame, uh, I get a sense, a little calmer sense of what he's doing. And I also like this frame, um, but I really wanted to actually capture the action of him throwing the net into the air. And so I managed to do that in this frame here, but unfortunately I actually missed focus. So if we zoom in here, everything's just that little bit out. And while it kind of still works, uh, I'm not really happy to, to use this image as the blur doesn't really add anything for me. In the end, one of my favorite photos from this session was actually one of the first ones that I captured. Now, ideally, I would have liked to move a little bit to the right and been able to capture a bit more of a, a diagonal in there, but the scene just got too messy and it really didn't allow for it. So this sort of straight on uh, shot where you see both people working ended up being my favorite representation of the scene. In the beginning of this video, I did promise you guys a few lessons learned or some things that I might like to do next time I went there. And so I think the first lesson that I learned is to really pay attention to how bright that light is getting. When we first began, I had to use, you know, f1.4 or f2 just to get a reasonably clean shot in the in the really dark morning. But the sun rises really, really quickly down there uh, near the equator. And so what I could have done within, you know, one or two minutes of shooting there was actually stop down to f4 or f5.6 and got a lot more depth of field and a lot less chance of uh, getting one of the characters in focus, the other one out, or having, you know, both characters out of focus because I slightly missed focus. And so being able to really pay attention to that scene, now of course I was uh, teaching and shooting and trying to help people as we were doing this, also trying to entertain this couple so they didn't get bored of us photographing them. So there's a lot going on, but no excuses there. I should have been uh, paying attention a little bit more to that light. The other thing that I feel like I could have done a better job of is actually stepping back a little bit and framing a little bit more loosely, just for those times when, as you saw, the horizon was a bit of a tilt, or maybe I missed the edge of the net as it was flying out of the frame. So shooting a little bit wider there, you know, I wasn't aiming for super shallow depth of field. I wasn't aiming for a very specific composition. So doing that would have probably helped me get a few more keepers that I didn't otherwise get. Uh, the other thing that I would have really loved to be doing was actually working with my 10 to 24, which I did have with me. And unfortunately, Etienne from Pix of Asia was looking at buying it at that point. And so he was holding it hostage that morning and wasn't really gonna give it back to me until he'd really felt it out. And so I didn't have the option to go super wide and get in really close, which I think would have added to that sort of dynamic feeling of the scene. I hope you've enjoyed this short look into my process while I'm on location and also a look at a few of the things that maybe I feel like I could have done better. If you enjoy this sort of video, I do actually have a couple more in my tips and techniques playlist, which I'll link at the end of the video. Um, and again, as always, I'm gonna have a little slideshow of some of my other favorite images from Lanco that morning because this, while it was one scene, was not actually my favorite shot from the morning. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about uh, workshops in central Vietnam or just learning a little bit more about travel photography in general, I do recommend that you go over and check out Etienne's blog on Pix of Asia. It's a really great resource. And honestly, when I stand next to him, I feel like I'm a bit of a failure as a photographer. So really well and truly worth going to check out what he does. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.